Hello and welcome to another Design Clips here at W Plus 9. This is Dawn. In today's video, I'm going to be creating some fun alcohol ink backgrounds. Yes, I've been bitten by the bug. They've made a huge comeback, so I had to dig them out and give it a whirl. I thought this would be a great technique to pair with our brand new products that we just released. In fact, they have just released today. So if you head over to wplus9.com, you can check those out. Now, we're mainly focusing on the Flock Yeah stamp set, but we're also going to be adding a few of the other products from this release along with it. I'm going to be creating two cards. Here we're going to be using the Fabulous die. This die cuts a negative, um, the word fabulous from your cardstock, or you could use the resulting letters as well. And then I'll be using some other product for the second card, but I'll show you that a little bit later. I'll be working on Yupo paper today, and I've tried it on a couple different papers, the specialty stamping slick paper, photo paper. I've tried it on several. My favorite results are on the Yupo, and I do like mine a little bit different. I prefer to use the 91% isopropyl alcohol. Um, I like my results to come out more glassy and translucent and very washy looking. I don't know, I like the colors to be a little more translucent than super, super bold and dark. You can also use the alcohol blending solution. However, what I found is that just makes the, the ink move and blend, but it doesn't lighten it. Whereas the alcohol will actually lighten the colors. So it really comes down to personal preference. And there are a lot of different ways to do this technique. There's a lot of tutorials here on YouTube. There really is no wrong way. I've tried a couple different ways. This is the method that works for me. I like to start off with a generous amount of rubbing alcohol. And you can see there, I use the dropper to just squirt it all over the paper. And then I'm going to randomly add my color. Here I'm using sunshine yellow, and then I'm going to add some watermelon. Now these two colors are gonna combine and they're gonna create my favorite color, coral. Um, can't get enough of it and I think that it's perfect for the flamingo cards. Now I'm going to use the straw to blow this around and you can see how far and fast this will move because I have so much alcohol on the paper. But it also waters down, I don't want to say waters down, alcohols down, <laughs> but it dilutes that ink quite a bit, lightens it up and it gives a very washy look, almost like watercolor and you guys know I'm a big fan of watercolor, so the advantage to this one though is that it dries so much faster than watercolor. I like to do this on a scratch piece of paper, and that way I can continue to turn the paper as needed and blow the ink in different directions. Occasionally I will add more alcohol. One of the things that I noticed is that the ink runs from the alcohol, so for the edges here, when I want that faded out look, I added more alcohol just to the edge and then blew it into the ink, and it'll give this really soft, faded look on the edges. And you can keep messing with this to your heart's content, adding more color, adding more alcohol. Um, really, you can't mess it up. If you do, just add more alcohol and then wipe it off, and then you could start all over. <laughs> it pretty much it leaves very little staining, so if you stain the same color family, you could reuse the sheet. So once I'm happy with the layer and how it looks, I'm gonna let it dry, and then I'm gonna come back and add some texture. And it's mostly dry at this point. There is a little puddle there in the lower right-hand corner. It's dry enough for my purposes. I'm gonna take a paintbrush, dip it into the alcohol, and then run my finger across the tips of it to create a really fine mist. I can do a really controlled version of this by getting close to the paper, just adding a little bit of alcohol to that brush, and then moving the brush slowly along while I run my finger across the bristles. This will allow me to kind of follow some of those harder lines of ink through the pattern and keep it from being, no, keep it a little more controlled and not so random, although random looks great too. And I like the way this looks, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and do my stamping and get ready for coloring these little images. Like I said, we're using the Flock Yeah stamp set. Again, this one's new, I love this set. It has some kind of tongue-in-cheek sentiments like uh, you are flocking fabulous, Flock Yeah, you still got it. Um, I just think that this is a really fun set, really appropriate for um, some of us who, we're not old, but we're not spring chickens anymore. <laughs> So I'm stamping this using my Misty. I'm working on Nina's Solar White 80 pound ultra smooth cardstock and I'm using Mementos Tuxedo Black ink to do my stamping. 
And that's because I'm going to be using Copic markers to color these and it is Copic friendly. I thought I'd leave in some of the Copic coloring this time around. Uh, it's been a while since I did a Copic video here on YouTube, so I thought, why not? Um, I'll kind of walk you through how I colored these. It's really super simple. I decided to do a four color blend on these and I started out by mapping out my shadows with my lightest color. And then I'm going to jump directly to my darkest color and I'm going to lay in my shadows. I'm going to work on both flamingos simultaneously and that way I can just mirror what I'm doing on one on the other. This will make it go a lot faster and take out any guesswork. I've got this at twice the speed so you can see I'm really not being overly careful. I'm just kind of flicking color in there. <laughs> then I'm going to take my mid-tone, well one up from the darkest, and I'm going to soften out that darkest color, pulling it out just a little bit further than before. And then I'm going to come in with one shade lighter than that and soften it out again. Again, this time I'm coming just a little bit further out. And then I will come back over with my lightest color to fill in the leftover white areas and soften out any areas where I think that the blend or the transition is a little hard. If I need to, I'll go back in and deepen up some areas or blend some areas out where I think that they just didn't blend very well. But I'm going to try to refrain from going too dark at this point because I want to get the rest of the color on the flamingo before I decide whether I've got enough contrast just yet. Once I've got the rest of the flamingo colored, I'll be able to tell if I have enough contrast or not. Now I'm going to move on to the rest of the body. These are little areas under his feathers, so I don't really have to do much there. And then I'll move on to his neck and his head. Now what I really, really like about these images is that they are a great size. These flamingos are about, they are just at three inches tall. So they are big enough to carry a cart all on their own or to be used along with other elements. And they really provide you enough space to be very creative with your coloring or they look great colored very simply as well with a, you know, one flat color or a two color blend. I've done them several ways and they always just turn out super cute. <laughs> I'm approaching the head and the neck the same way that I approached the feathers on his back. Mapped out my shadows, put in my darker color, and then I'm coming out and softening that darker color with one shade lighter. Again, filling in more of that space each time until I work my way to my lightest color again where I will fill in any remaining white areas and then soften any areas that I feel the transition just isn't smooth enough. Here I felt like he needed a little more depth. And then bringing up any shadows higher or further out where I think that they need to be. Again, it's so much easier to add color than it is to remove. So I like to err on the side of caution and wait until I have most of the image colored before I decide to take the shadows further or deeper. Here, I'm just adding a few more shadows to this guy. And then soften that out just a little bit. I'll just finish them off by filling in their legs and their beaks with an R81 marker and then they'll be done. I took the same approach with the palm trees except this time I have a lot more freedom. I'm going to fill in all except for the highlight on the palm fronds with my lightest color. So I have my general main light source which in this case is the upper left hand corner which is kind of my default. And then I I'm going to map in my shadows on the underside of the fronds and then in the very center where they would be growing out from the trunk. Now like I said, you have more freedom with the palm trees. Because they are the fronds are crossing over each other and casting shadows on each other and the light would be coming through fronds, so there would be breaks in the light and then the light would be reflected into different spots, you're not as... Um, 
it's not as obvious if your highlights or shadows are in strange places or unnatural places. Um, here you can just get a general light and dark source and then just add different depths of color for interest. Trying to keep track of exactly where a shadow would fall or where the light would be hitting is just going to drive you crazy. And let's face it, it's a palm tree for a card. It's not quite that important. <laughs> like I said, as long as you have a good mix of uh, lights and darks with uh, good contrast, it'll look fine. And honestly, looking back at this voice in it over, I I kind of dig it with just the light and the dark. It has this very stylistic look. Um, I think I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to play with that a bit. I I do actually really like that look. Once they were all colored, I used the Flockia yeah Companion die to cut out all of my pieces, and then I colored a few more off camera and die cut those out as well. So now I've got several pieces and parts to make my cards. I wanted to create a window for our alcohol inked backgrounds. So I used the new fabulous die and I die cut that from a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card panel here. So when I layer that um, alcohol inked background behind it, it's going to show through the negative spaces. And I'm going to flank it on the top and the bottom with a couple sentiments from the Flock yeah stamp set. I'm going to heat emboss those in white on black cardstock. You guys know the drill. Treat it with an anti-static tool, stamp it in Versamark, cover it with embossing powder, knock off the excess, and then melt it with the heat tool. I did the same thing for the You Still Got It sentiment, and then I trimmed them both out. Now it's time to assemble my card. I've cut that top panel down to four by five and a quarter inches, and I'm adhering the palm trees directly to that panel using some strong adhesive. Then I'm gonna flip it over and trim off the excess that's hanging over the sides. I'll just adhere that alcohol inked background directly to the card base, again using strong adhesive, and then I'm going to pop that front panel up on foam tape. This is going to create a nice little drop shadow behind those letters and add even more depth. I also used foam tape to adhere the sentiments and my flamingo. I love the way the curve of his neck tucks right up against those letters. It's almost like it was designed that way. <laughs> and like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I love the sentiments in this set, the cheeky sentiments. I think this would be a perfect milestone birthday card because what woman does not want to hear that, you know, she still got it. So we still have a lot of leftover pieces. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we put together this next card. It's gonna go a lot quicker because all of the hard part has been done. We've created our background, we've colored all of our images. So I've taken one of my alcohol ink backgrounds and I have trimmed it and adhered it to the front of a standard four and a quarter, five and a half inch card base. This time we're gonna be layering a die cut over top of it. And we're gonna be using the new Trellis Background 2 die. Now there is a Trellis Background 1 die and they can be used together to create a more intricate multicolored pattern, but they can be used alone as well and create beautiful results. I always like to die cut my intricate dies facing up. That way I can see right away whether I need to run it through in another pass or if I need to do any shimming. And here I didn't, so I'm gonna go ahead and poke out all of the negative pieces and we're ready to adhere this to the front of our card. Now I briefly mentioned the Trellis Background 1 die. This is the Trellis Background 1 and 2 die. Now they, again, they can be used separately or they can be used together. So the Trellis Background 2 die has more open spaces and then the trellis background one die has more solid space. So again, these can be used alone or you can layer them on top of each other and get a completely different look. You can also layer these two over a solid card, over a solid background to add a third color in. And it's just a quick and easy way to make a very interesting background. You could even die cut the one die from several different colors and replace some of the negatives with different colors to create some fun, interesting patterns as well. There's a lot of versatility with these dies, but today we're just going to be using the Trellis Background 2 die and we're going to be adhering it directly on top of our alcohol inked background. Now you can use spray adhesive if that's easier for you. Either works just fine. I'm going to go ahead and press this down and then I always like to take my bone folder and burnish over the entire thing just to make sure that that adhesive is firmly adhered. I'm going to create a little collage style focal point using all of those leftover pieces that we have. 
So we've got that extra palm tree, the extra flamingo that we colored, and we've even got some of that palm tree that we cut off of the edge of the other card. Remember the part that was hanging over? I'm gonna go ahead and make use of that as well. And I'm gonna back all of these with a circle that I've die cut from vellum using the Simon Says Stamp Stitch Circles dies. Now for the sentiment, I felt like I needed something pretty bold, so I'm gonna be using the Happy Birthday die, which is also included in our new May 2018 release. I'm gonna cut this twice. I'm gonna do it once from white, and then I'm going to ink blend a background and die cut from that as well. And I'm going to put that behind as like a colorful drop shadow. And for that, I'm using Distress Oxide inks in Worn Lipstick and Spiced Marmalade. Now these blend together beautifully. And in the middle, they'll create that kind of coral color. And it's going to mimic our alcohol ink background perfectly. Now I decided I wanted the sentiment to have a little bit more heft. So I went ahead and die cut another one from white. And then I'm just going to stack these two on top of each other and then stack that on top of my ink blended one. I adhered everything to the front of the card and then trimmed off the excess there on the left side that was hanging off. The only thing left to do was complete my sentiment and for that I used the word wishes from our birthday wishes stamp set. Again, this is another new stamp set, super economical, $6 for a great little birthday sentiment set. Love it. I heat embossed that in white on black and then I just adhered that directly to the card base. And that finishes up the second card. I did end up adding a few sequins from Neat and Tangled. I felt like I just needed a little something something and sequins and flamingos. They just felt like they went together to me. So <laughs> I love how we were able to start with the same basic techniques and supplies and create two similar yet different cards. I hope you enjoyed today's video and this closer look at some of our new products that just released. Remember, if you want to find out more about these products, you can visit our blog at stampawaywithme.blogspot.com and you can find all of the featured W plus 9 supplies at wplus9.com as well as at many of your favorite retailers. And you can find all of this information in the description box below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye!